eight month old Cassia, and uh, that's eight, and then that was Cassia's grandmother. And the one thing I remember about my grandmother from the day that I've known her until the day that she passed was that she had this appointment that she absolutely had to make every day, like from Monday to Friday. I'm just wondering, this is a Latin crowd, so I'm sure you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. Whoops. Yes, it was an appointment with the telenovela. And I knew that during that time, my, time, my options were really limited, right? So I could either watch the telenovela with her, but in silence, or I could eat the cornbread that she would make, but it's like two hours of novella. Or I could come up with a story that was better than the cornbread and the novella, and then my grandmother would pay attention to me, right? And so um, then I grew up and I, and I saw how storytelling had really been one of the main protagonists in my education as well. Because when I found out about the story behind the songs I used to play, it made me want to play the songs better, right? And then uh, when I went to school and I asked the questions to my teachers in the form of a story, then the teachers were really eager to give me the answers. And so later on, when I became an economist and I got an MBA, I really realized that the ability to frame a narrative around the numbers that I loved working with so much actually really helped me in understand really complex problems and see the world in a much more expensive way. And what I want to tell you today is that like, I was not the only one doing that because everybody in this room is a storyteller. I mean, storytelling has been in our humanity. It's a timeless skill. And when we go back and look at history, our human history, we see that the main driver of change were actually the stories that were told. Um, so when I found out about this, right, I was like, so what is this mechanism that like drives a story into actual action, right? So that's what I found out. So as humans, we're driven by a purpose, a cause, a belief. So when somebody offers us the experience to experience something through a story, we immediately pay attention because we want that story to have a meaning. And when that story has a meaning, it elicits an emotion inside of us. And when we have an emotion, we feel connected. And so when we're connected, when we feel like we belong, like we're part of something greater than ourselves, it actually links back to that purpose that drives us and it makes us act. So um, then I said, all right, so in a world where there's like so much information and the attention of people is so scarce, gosh, if I can come up with like, a formula for a really, really good story, then that's like winning the lottery, right? So that's what I try to do. Um, I know it's a lot of variables, and there's a whole class that I give on just that one side alone, but the one thing I wanted to tell you that there's only, there's many variables, but there's only driving force that actually moves the plot and the character forward. And that driving force is conflict, because conflict is going to make your character change. The character in the end of the story is not the same as in the beginning. The character has stopped reacting and he started to act. Um, so actually going through this exercise made me realize something that I use a lot at the bank and in many other aspects of my life too, is that sometimes it's not what you say, but it's how you say it, right? And so, um, when I think about uh, my job at the IDB, I work at the private sector, and sometimes I'm faced with tasks that are very, very technical. And in that instance, what I do is I look at the task and I step back and I say, okay, let me understand this task within the context of the whole purpose that is overarching the organization, right? And then once I understand it, I try to communicate that task within a storytelling framework that actually links back to that purpose, which is improving lives. So, uh, so I'm going to share one thing with you that was really interesting that happened to me. So um, Enrique mentioned that I'm also a writer, and a few years ago I published my first book. And an amazing thing happened that I really didn't expect was that a lot of people actually came to me and they started sharing their own stories with me, right? So to me, that was just empirical evidence of the hypothesis that I already had, that we all have a story to share. We all have a story to tell. And when we connect with our own purpose that makes us unique,
we actually inspire others around us to do the same. And when we do this, we can connect with people at a deeper level, not only because of their qualities, but also because of their vulnerabilities. And having this knowledge over here of qualities and vulnerabilities actually makes us into better opportunity makers because we're able to gather around the best part of one another and then together co-create and achieve something that's much bigger than anything that could, we could ever have done alone. So, Enrique, thank you so much to allow me to be part of your job. And also, I hope that by sharing the power that storytelling has had in my life, it can benefit you as well and enrich your life as well. So thank you very much.